What is up, cool kids? I just wanted to make a really quick video to talk about the new Disney Magic the Gathering competition. They've announced Lorcana, a trading card game. It looks like it's actually going to be a paper product. At first, I was a little confused, but I just wanted to go over the first few cards because Disney Celebration is happening right now, and they're unloading a bunch of information actually it's a little bit of information but if you're on the show floor at d23 you'd be able to get um some of the first ever printed copies of these cards let's take a look at this article from polygon and then we'll jump over to their social media account we'll take a look at these cards real quick and see what's going on so Lorcana is a Disney branded trading card game that looks to go up against Magic the Gathering and Pokemon. You'll see why in a second. Really, um, it's far more Magic the Gathering than Pokemon, but let's take a quick look. First off, this key art that they have here is really interesting. Um, they have a few versions of it. Let me see. Hold on one sec. It's, it's really cool. There's this little, like, palace thing in what we can only assume is space or wherever Fantasia takes place. The logo's interesting as well. Uh, it's It's got a portal thing going on. A little bit of a James Bond thing going on, actually. Um, but we're going to see this symbol on the cards, so we'll take a look in a second. Um, what does it say here... Brand manager Ryan Miller, veteran Wizards of the Coast, who also helped design the gameplay of Disney's Lorcana, said, The basic idea is there's this place called the Great Illuminary. It is a treasury of all the Disney songs and stories ever made, all of the characters, and it's where they're kind of recorded. So like a library. The players take the role of an Illumineer, this powerful sorcerer that has the ability to bring these characters to life off the page. Players will be bringing a band of their favorite Disney characters together to adventure in this world. It is Magic the Gathering, but for Disney characters. Um, this article is more about the announcement, but there is an article that exposes the cards. So this is some of the key art. I'm a little zoomed out right now, but let's take a look. These are the first cards of Lorcana. What you can see here is you have the main character. In it. So let's actually just start from the top of the cards. You've got what we can only assume is a summoning cost. Up here in the top left, there's a nine on Maleficent. Uh, Stitch has a six. Elsa has a three. Cruella is a two. Captain Hook's a one. And Robin Hood here is a six. Um, you've got the character name, and then what you've got is kind of a, a description of this version of the character. So the Mickey that we've seen uh, is here. So the Mickey says, Brave Little Taylor. So this Mickey, we're probably going to have a whole bunch of different Mickeys. And each one of the versions of Mickey, the different tales and stories and songs that play a part in mickey's background and history is probably going to change the name brave little taylor each one will probably do a different thing so i think that's really cool um let's actually take a look can i zoom out one little tiny bit uh there we go so here we've got maleficent and captain hook a couple of the first cards um, this little type line here, this is Storyborn Villain Dragon. I believe those are going to be card types. So anything with anthems, uh, anything with, you know, cast triggers or buff triggers, it's going to look at those, uh, keywords. Uh, here next to the name, we've got Power 7, Defense 5. So this is going to be how much it, damage it can deal, how much uh, health it has just like a normal uh, card I'm actually quite a big fan of this layout so far again we haven't seen that many cards I would love to see maybe a full art version of some of these to kind of see what Disney's going for in a collectible environment 
Uh, next up on this Maleficent, we've got an ability, Dragonfire. When you play this character, you may banish chosen opposing character. So in launching a game like uh, Lorcana, you're going to see a bunch of keywords that are new because they want to do things that traditional trading cards do, especially Magic the Gathering. Tons of keywords. So the unfortunate part about learning a new trading card game is that you're going to have to learn all these new keywords. There's a lot of assumptions we can make. For instance, Maleficent here probably when it says may banish chosen opposing character that probably means exile a card uh a card that's in play um we haven't really figured out what these two little symbols here mean um hopefully we get a oh you know even better look here That is just in an awkward spot on my... Well, there we go. Better. Cool. Um, so yeah, there's two little symbols here. Then on the bottom right, we've got Disney Lorcana, Disney Symbol. We've got D23 Expo, which is where this is available. And then we've got a first symbol here, which we can assume means it's a first printing. Um, over here, we've got English, 5P1. We've got the illustrator's name. Um... Yeah, I'm not sure. One TFC probably means it's part of this original set. English and then 5P1, unsure. Captain Hook, very similar. Same card build. We've got one mana cost. Captain Hook, forceful duelist. He's got one power, two toughness. His creature types are Dreamborn, Villain, Pirate, Captain. He has challenger plus two. When challenging, this character gets plus two on attack. So they're really trying to establish their set of symbols. Uh, they don't, they're not using the word to its power. They're just using the symbol, which you can see up here on the power marker. So challenger, when challenging. So I believe that challenge is what they're using internally or in this game to mean fighting. So you challenge with this character, or maybe challenging is blocking. He loves to make light of foes' predicaments. So we've also got some flavor text. And then here again, we've got another one dot. Um, we could take a quick look at this article that's previewing these new cards and see if there's an explanation. So far, I haven't seen one. It might actually be like a rarity. Uh, then we've got Elsa, the Snow Queen. She's three mana. Again, we don't know how mana is going to work in this either. Uh, they are two power, three toughness, dreamborn hero, queen, sorcerer. They have an ability, freeze, tap Elsa to exert chosen opposing character. So exert in this context probably means tap. You're freezing something, you're tapping it down so that they can't control it. They have a little one symbol here. Cool. It's a cool little design. Then we've got Cruella de Vil, two mana for Cruella de Vil, miserable as usual. Uh, one power, three toughness, storyborn villain. They have an ability called You'll Be Sorry. When this character is challenged and banished, you may return chosen character to their player's hand. So here we've got another couple of keywords that we can make some assumptions on. Uh, when this character is challenged, which means it was blocked and banished, which means it was killed. So it goes to your, instead of going to your graveyard, it probably gets banished. So there's probably a banished pile. Uh, you may return chosen character to their player's hand. So you bounce a, a character that's already on the battlefield. We don't know how the battlefield is gonna lay out. Again, we don't really know how we're casting things. Um, and we've got Robin Hood, six mana for a 4-4 four, four, unrivaled archer. He's a storyborn hero. He's got two abilities. The first one is Feed the Poor. When you play this character, if an opponent has more cards in their hand than you, draw a card. That's pretty good card advantage. And then we've got Good Shot. During your turn, this character has evasive. They can challenge characters with evasive. So evasive is going to be a keyword that says can only be challenged by other creatures with evasive this card can do that 
And then we've got Stitch here, six mana for a 3-5 rock star. He's a Floodborne hero alien. He's got shift four. You may pay four to play this on top of one of your Stitch characters. Oh, you can evolve a baseline here. So it is a bit like Pokemon. Interesting. And then it's got an ability called Adoring Fans. Whenever you play a character with cost two or less, you may exert it to draw a card. So when you play something, you can tap it to draw a card. Actually, I might be thinking that these little dots on the side might be evolution markers. We've got a one, a one, two, one. Maybe this is the order you have to play them in. Uh, let me just do some quick reading. The first seven cards feature a seventh card. Blah, blah, blah. Artist involved. Da, da, da. Friday's details above. The Mickey card being given. Okay. And then we've got the Mickey card here. Eight mana for a 5-5. Five, five. He's got four markers. So maybe he's the fourth evolution. He has evasive. Only characters with evasive can block. That's pretty cool. Um, let me just quickly see... Prosperous Heroes, blah, blah, blah. this game is probably the largest potential that Ravensburger has ever gone after, hence, okay. So, we don't have clear indication on what all of this stuff means quite yet. Here's this nice little kit you can buy if you're at D23. I'm assuming it's for sale. They don't, they don't specifically say for sale, they just say available. Uh, this has the original six cards that they've just revealed. Uh, for Lorcana, plus the Mickey one they're giving out for free if you find them. Um, does this... Let's just watch the trailer and see where it goes. No sound. Okay, it's just some drawing. The first chapter. So they're just showing off the cards here. Oh, is that like a, sh a shiny treatment on the stitch there? Maybe. No, I think they're just animating the cards. Yeah. Your adventure begins fall 2023. So it's going to be a while. Um, there's no... No timeline on more information. Um, well, ba -ba -ba -ba, the game will also include flourishes of fans and collected cards have come to know. Top of the line releases, meanwhile. So, again, we don't have a lot of information about if you know... Say you're at D23 right now, you're collecting these cards, um, you're getting all the information. If you know something we don't, definitely let us know in the comments below. Otherwise, this was a really quick, really first, um, really quick and really minimal first look at Disney's Lorcana done by, uh, what is their name? Uh, Ravensburger. I'm I'm kind of excited about this. I don't know that I've been tr toying with the idea of getting into Pokemon a little bit. I like the idea of of other card games that are are fun and add little splashes. I'm never going to stop playing Magic. That's going to be my first love always, but having something fun I can talk friends into playing because of the brand and IP that's attached to it. Who knows? And this is Disney. We could see a full Star Wars set. Maybe maybe that Star Wars set that everyone's talking about coming to Magic the Gathering isn't going to happen now because Disney's doing their own thing. If you're excited about Lorcana, want to hear more, definitely give the channel a subscribe. Say hello in the comments. Tell us what you're excited about. Tell us what kind of characters you want to see in Lorcana. Who's your favorite Disney character? What kind of card would they be? Would they be aggro or controlling or an anthem or a lord? 
let me know in the comments below. This was a really quick look at the minimal announced information on Lorcana. Thank you for stopping by and watching to the end, and we'll see you on the next one. Peace out.